Over 5,000 men living behind the gates of one of America's oldest prisons. Serving sentences so long, most will die here. One out of every two that you, that you see in this prison is a murder. Violence close to the surface, ready to explode. Trouble's not hard to find. If, you, if you're looking for it, if you're not careful, trouble will find you. I didn't see it. I didn't know. I will maintain my mental stability when I need and succeed in the ground. Two ways out, dead or alive. I'm I'm Ninety miles from New Orleans, up the Mississippi River, lies Louisiana State Penitentiary. Commonly referred to as Angola, at 18... estimated that 90% of them will die here. Yet things have changed drastically over the past decade, and much credit goes to Warden Burl Kane. Corrections is our name. The root word is to correct deviant behavior. If we can save one person from being a victim of violent crime, it's worth everything we do. And that's really what our mission is. It's not to torment and torture, but it's to correct bad behavior and do that any way you can. And the, the root way to do that is morality. Moral people obviously don't rape, pilfer, and steal. Right here in the midst of Angola, I have seen change at this because they see the favor of God on your life. Warden Kane's approach to morality works on two levels. One, spiritual and religious. The other, engaging employment opportunities. Church is optional. Work is not. Well, I've been editing for really about a month now. And I've uh, been with... LSP Productions for about nine months. Perhaps the most unusual example of innovation at Angola is the TV station. The only big house production company in the United States. Before we do a shoot, we have to kind of step back and kind of ask, well, if some outside company was doing it, what would they ask? I mean, you choose your behavior, you choose your consequence. I chose Angola by the lifestyle that I was living. I'm not gonna just lay down and just roll over. I mean, I want my life to mean something, and it can even know that I'm in prison. Every member of the TV station, but one, is serving a life sentence. Well, I really enjoy it. You know, it's a challenge. Of course, I like learning new things, and I hope to make a career out of it if I should ever get out of prison. LSP TV broadcasts on a closed circuit system. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are religious shows, educational programming, and the most popular of all, sports. All right, they're mixing it up early. What we do is a TV station does a show called Ringside, and once a month we we'll go to another prison here in, in Louisiana, we'll go from BOC, and the boxing team here will fight the boxing team there. Sports keep people's minds off the tedium of time and few sports are more popular than boxing. For those who make the team, it's a paid job, albeit the salary range is only four to 20 cents an hour. Well, I mean, you know, doing what you love, whatever, you know, I mean, I'm a boxer, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I love, that's what I'm gonna do to the day I die. And to be able to do what you want is, is a sort of freedom. If boxing spices up Angola's weekly TV right. schedule, Here we are. it is the rodeo that provides the year's greatest highlights. The event takes place on prison grounds every Sunday in October and twice in April. The stadium holds 10,000. All free people coming to see the spectacle. No, actually no, I never rolled a horn dog bull in my life. I come up here and it seemed like it just all took place. Inmates in good standing can participate. No skill required. You nervous? You excited? A little nervous. I got 51 years. 
On drive and aggravated burger. Bad luck. Is it hurt? Just a little bit. The inmates also get rewarded for winning the rodeo events. $200 for convict poker. $80 for winning the bull riding event. Cowboy of the Year, awarded to the highest scoring inmate, gets a championship buckle. These are the worst inmates you could have in any prison in the country, but yet they're rehabilitated to the point that they can come and mingle with the people. It just shows that we can change prisons in America. We can have culture changes within our prisons that we have here. Some criticize the event's brutality. Others say the prisoners don't deserve the excitement of the rodeo. These inmates who participate can be king for a day. And that's something they really never get in prison. And some people would say, well, who cares? Well, I say, well, what one day? Great day for a rodeo. He will get set for the event that is indeed unique to Angola. It's about uh, challenging the bull. So who got the, uh, the biggest, you know, kahunas? <laughs> the biggest prize is for guts and glory. The goal? Pull a chit off a bad bull's head. It's a brutal event, and many a man has sacrificed his own blood and bones to take home the $500 prize, worth more than a year's wages. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, saying, God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. And he said, let him have dominion over the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and the beasts of the field, and every creeping thing that roam upon earth. God gave this. Thank God. Coming up, while some at Angola find freedom in the brutality of the rodeo arena, there are those who barely see the light of day. The restriction is too severe for me. For them, there is Camp J. You will be held here until you can get to the program. I have been without food for seven days now. Angola's soil is some of the richest in the United States. And with field work and livestock to attend, horses to be broken, and vegetables to be grown, there is no such thing as an unemployed prisoner. Most of the inmates have bought into Warden Kane's program. But for those who refuse, there's Camp J where the men spend their days in solitary confinement. We want them to hate being at Camp J, so they'll alter their behavior, and once they get back out into the population, they won't commit another rule infraction. The ones that come here, come here for serious rule infractions. Uh, it may be an aggravated fight, which is a fight with a weapon. It may be for an assault on staff. It may be for uh, trying, attempting to traffic drugs inside the prison. Inmates on level one only get out one hour, two days a week. If you make it to level three, you get out three days a week. I got busted on this charge on aggravated race second degree kidnapping. I'm not saying that I'm no saint, but I'm saying that everybody is like, is wrong. Everybody did wrong. Every, everybody in this world done stole, done lied, done killed, done did everything. Ain't no crime is greater than no other crime on this earth. You got certain inmates supposed to be here. And you got certain free folks supposed to be here. Supposed to be locked up in here, not be working here, in here. Trouble's not hard to find if you're, if you're looking for it. And uh, if you're not careful, the trouble will find you. Sir McCoy. Yes, sir. How you feeling? No, I can't. About normal? 
Most try to pass through the program as quickly as possible. But then there are some men, like Billy McCoy, who's been in and out of Camp J for over a decade. You get yourself back on track like you were just a week ago. Yes, sir. You were doing well. Yes, sir. All right. Yes. I will do everything I can to see if we can get you to CCR, but you got to get yourself advanced in the okay. program first. Okay. okay, watch this now. I am, I have always been on track. I will maintain my mental stability when I did and six feet in the ground. I will not lose my mental stability. This morning, since you mentioned that, this morning one of your officers, Captain Dufo, dashed a bucket of ice water in your me because I won't eat. Billy. Trying to force me into eating. Billy, you the officer would not put a tray of you food. You and I both know that's not true. The officer would not put a tray of food on the tray. The restriction is too severe for me being 63 years old. You will be held here until you can get to the program. I will die yourself, without any food. Conduct yourself according to the program. I'm, I'm conducting myself. I will die first. I have been without food for seven days now. Billy McCoy claimed he's been on hunger strike for seven days. We documented he's been on hunger strike for almost three days. He'll eat soon. He's, he's done this before. He never stays on very long. He'll eat and then a meal, and he can probably go on hunger strike again right after that meal. For those who refuse to cooperate, even the most meager amenities that Camp J offers are eliminated. There's different sanctions we can place on an inmate when they get a write-up at Camp J. Uh, one of the sanctions is it's called a food loaf. A uh, food loaf will be issued to an inmate who has been caught holding food in his cell, holding utensils or cups, that kind of thing in his cell, gets caught throwing food or throwing other objects, he can be put on food loaf. Basically, you have a serving of everything from every child. Like if it's for lunch, you have everything that's on the lunch tray, with the exception of dessert, will be placed in the food loaf. Measure, measure everything up. Is this the result right here? Queen of 21. Yes, sir. 54. For men serving solitary time, keeping their sanity is the hardest challenge. Each man has his own way to stay strong. I spared your queen of lead time. I'm going to take him this time. It expands your thoughts, you know, your thinking ability. You develop a, a lot of skills from playing chess. It's a thinking man game, you know. Make you the best move you can make because I'm gonna destroy you, man. The hardest part of being in a cell 24 hours a day, I think, is just really maintaining your sanity and not letting the pressures get to you. You know, you got a lot of pressure being in a cell. Not being able to have the proper spacing and just, you know, not being able to get out a lot. That's difficult, you know, and it's hard to maintain sanity like that. Outside that, you know, we just here, you know, like standing on our head in one spot, you know, stalemate, like a chess game. It's your move. Hey, man. The two of those guys, I think they probably will be out of Camp J soon. Uh, both of them have done well while they've been here. It's all about attitude. We can't help somebody if they want, don't want to help themselves. And, but I'm more than willing to help any of them who are willing to make that effort on their own behalf. Coming up, two ways out of Angola. One is hard-earned freedom lurking just beyond the front gate. The other path is death. 2,000 pounds were really on my back. And then it takes about a minute and a half to breathe the two breaths usually, and then they'll stop breathing. There are close to 3,000 staff working around the clock to assure the smooth running of this prison. Many of them call Angola home, raising their children on the beeline the only town in America built behind prison walls. The citizens call it the safest town in America. And each one who lives here provides some special service more, more than just his job. Like medicals here, doctors are here, EMTs, people from the farm, the cows might get out. Indeed, Angola not only has its own zip code, it also has its own golf course. If the beeline is the safest part of Angola, death row 
is the most ominous. Executions have been temporarily halted, awaiting a ruling by the Supreme Court. In the meantime, the cells have been filling up. How you doing? I'm blessed. Good to see you. This is my buddy. This is Emmanuel Ortiz. Yeah. You doing good in here? Yes. Yes, are you getting used to this cell block and it being? Well, the cells are larger, you know, than the ones we used to have back over there. Yeah. And, uh, so you liking it better? It's better, much better. It is better? Yes. Everybody liking Definitely. it better. Manuel Ortiz, convicted of murdering his wife and her friend, has been on the row since 1996. If you don't exercise your mind or your body, you know, it start to deteriorate. We try to use push-ups, you know, squash, things of that nature. Because imagine 14 years in a cage, you know. It's, it take a toll on the body and on the mind, you know. All right, good to see you, my Frenchman. You still seeing that French woman? You still, she still riding you? She broke up. Men have spent up to two decades here. And while some pursue their cases until the last breath, others would just as soon give up. There are a lot of guys here, you know, I can't mention no names, you know, but they also would like to get it over. You wake up with a, with this, uh, I call it a, a gorilla, you know, a 2,000 pounds gorilla on my back every morning. The dead carry a death penalty, you know. It's something you can, uh, re it's reality, you know. Until recently, contact visits, a chance for family members to touch death row inmates, have been prohibited. Let me tell you, these guys have mamas and sisters and children and grandma and all that. I don't think they ought to only get to touch you when you're dead, after you're executed. And so I'm pretty passionate about letting them have that contact visit if I know security is going to prevail. But you're not doing it as much for them as you're doing it for their family. A lot of people misunderstand that and say, oh, he shouldn't have a contact visit. Well, his mother didn't commit the murder, you know? And you have to think about all sides of it when you're making decisions. Contact visits or not, their time at Angola ends at the death house. The method, lethal injection. At this point, we get him strapped down and get the shoulder strapped down, then I'm going to close the curtain, and then out come the EMTs, and they're going to start the IVs. We have from six to nine to do it. There are the two phones, and they go to the Department of Corrections into the governor's mansion, but they never rank. I'll start, I'll give a signal, nod my head, start the process, and they'll start pushing the drug in it. Then it takes about a minute and a half to breathe the two breaths usually, and then they'll stop breathing. Did you find a vein with them with that much pressure on him? In the case of John Brown, since the IV was in his neck, he got a rush. Sodium pentothal was the first drug, and he kind of raised up in the straps. I was holding his hand. He wanted me to hold his hand. And so I wound up having to put my thumb under here and push him down with my hand, push his shoulder to the table and hold that so the IV wouldn't rub, the, wouldn't rub on the strap and, and dislodge. And then by the same time, I'm holding his hand. So you kind of get in conflict with yourself. You're holding him down, but you're holding him hand to give comfort. But again, you know, I couldn't be there to hold a victim's hand, or I would have. So do what you can here. Warden Kane has overseen six executions during his tenure. Death by lethal injection might have been temporarily stalled, but death by incarceration never falters. The population is aging, with hundreds of men 60 years and older. Even they dream of freedom. I got hopes. I just got denied by hearing. This is a hearing from the foreign I wrote him uh, two weeks later, he sent back said, uh, at this time, we came put you on the board because of the nature of your crime, which you're never going to change. You see, never. So here I am with hope and faith. If not, then I'll die here.
Since death is a reality most men here must face, the casket shop never lacks for work. Through the years, you know, as time goes on, people get older and uh, I've married a, you know, a bunch of friends of mine up here. That, you know, they're people I've made friends with through the years. After a man fell out of the bottom of a poorly made coffin in 1997, Warden Kane opened the casket building workshop. You can have a good life in prison. You can have a good life anywhere. That's what you make of it, you know. I mean, prison, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a terrible aspect that you have to be away from the people that you love, you know, your family, your children. My, my daughter wasn't born when I got locked up, and now I'm a grandfather. Some deceased are picked up by family members and buried as free men. For most, there's Point Lookout. Definitely bad to die, you know, in prison, but ultimately we all have to die. They have a nice service, and, uh, and they, they, they bear it, you know, with dignity and respect, you know, in Angola. Coming up. The battle to keep the prison clean requires a shakedown team. There's probably not a spot in the cell that something hadn't been found in. Sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. It's really amazing just where all they can hide stuff. Yeah, my dog. While the Beeline family celebrate the holidays, for many of the inmates, it can be a lonely time. Christmas is a hard time in prison. It is. These people, they're human too. They're inmates, but they're humans. We have to be a little more diligent about watching out for mental health issues and that kind of thing around Christmas time because they do, uh, it's depressing. I really like Christmas, uh, but if I stop long enough and I think about it, I'll get teary-eyed, but it'll pass. January 1st, so it'll be all over with. There is no place in Angola where the spirit of Christmas is stronger than at the toy shop. The toys are distributed to needy children throughout Louisiana. What we're gonna make for you now is a little frog. It's basically a all year process. The only time we stop is when we run out of wood. This is the best job in the prison. You know, you're doing something you want to do, and you're doing something you help children. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, but this is the time of year you enjoy being in the toy shop. When I was small, I didn't, very seldom did I have any toys. Although I'm in prison, I'm still a human being, and I love Christmas, and I love children. It makes us all feel good. Now, when you mount these on here, that's your axles for your axles. You can see how the car could, could ride, okay? Now you got a little car. While hard work and faith in God help keep the prison running smoothly, order cannot be maintained without a shakedown crew in daily pursuit of inmates not wanting to play by the rules. We shake down every day, kind of random as far as where we shake down. You got 18,000 acres to cover. They're in these cells 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's probably not a spot in this cell that something hadn't been found in. It's really amazing just where all they can hide stuff. All right, you can go back in there. Do they know you're coming? No. When we get to that gate, the majority of them probably will. Finding contraband such as food or non-prison approved merchandise can lead to write-ups. The less severe have few consequences. The more severe get you back to Camp J. Random searches are the norm. The odd tip or simply good police work the most effective. Tips are good. We get tips, a lot of tips. The majority of the time, we find stuff I love. 
you just kind of come across it, right time, right place. Once upon a time, weapons were required for an inmate to survive. Today, drugs are the most common contraband found. Found a syringe. Use that to shoot up with. Can't pin it on nobody, you know what I mean? So you just confiscate it and write it unusual on it. Let the wardens know about it. The one thing I ask you is when I'm, when I'm, I'm talking to you, be straight up with me, all right? Don't make me find out different when I leave here. I no, we got okay. through. We had our party yesterday. Okay. Do you have this at your party? That's where some of that stuff came from. Man, don't lie to me. You see that right there? That makes me very angry. Yes, I have no makes Needles, where are they at? Uh, well, okay, uh, I could have just stuck myself with that. I was very, very close to it, and I don't know what you do right. with this. No, it's so so here, don't so. do that, okay? Right here. I'll keep them right okay, here. don't keep them there. You need to put them somewhere. If somebody comes to shake your stuff down, yeah, you need to make sure you tell them that you have needles in this box, uh, okay? That's the one I have right there. Although needles are not allowed in personal lockers, they rarely result in a write up. What's this for? You don't do tattoos, do you? No. None? Yeah, I can't so if I finish looking down the rest of this stuff, I'm not going to find parts to make a tattoo gun? Well, I'm going to find any parts of anything there. Why do you keep your antenna in your wallet? It's a place to keep it so I know where it's at. It's right on time. I'm going to check on a few things and I'm going to get back with you. So I didn't know you about anything you asked me about. I just want to make sure you tell me the truth, that's all. All right. All right. I'll check on some things. Okay. That's, how they, that's how they do us in here. You see, you see how they handle my stuff? Just throw it around and stuff. You no, know, they're trying to tell me I did something wrong. I'm just living my little box, you know what I'm saying? I don't have anything here I'm not supposed to have. All oh, this is official. How do you feel now? Do they go through all that? I'm violated, man. I'm going checking on my tattoos and stuff. That's the way I'm from. Like, that makes a difference. I don't have anything in this box to violate the codes here. She trying to tell me about tattoos and stuff. Man, I was, this is free world work. You know what I'm saying? I got this in California. I got this in New Orleans. Been around. This ain't, you know what I'm saying? And people playing games because we live in a, out of boxes. I'm official with my thing. There's nothing here to violate. I'm used to free world steak and shrimp. They got me eating out of a bag in a box, you know? While no contraband turned up in Donald Logan's shakedown, a pipe made from a pen is found in another dorm. It was found in an inmate's box, and you can smell it. It's, apparently, they've been using it to smoke marijuana. So I'm going to take it to investigators and get them to crack it open and see if they can get some of the residue out of it and test it. A full-time criminal investigation team has been set up at Angola with drug testing capabilities. Since we don't have the red in color, but it could have been positive for marijuana, but we may not have enough substance. So we'll call this test an inconclusive test. So just because it didn't test positive doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't being used for narcotics. It just means once it's smoked and it's burnt, it's harder to test than something that hadn't already been burnt. But he'll still be charged with contraband for, that for the pen. ink pen yeah. because he used it up for other source than what it's supposed to be used for. Today's second catch appears much more promising. I got the bed lunch. That's marijuana. The investigation unit is led by retired police officer Colonel Ken Norris. We're like an internal affairs unit within this prison. We investigate everything involving the correctional officers as well as the inmates. That's everything from, you know, stealing bacon to murder. While a certain percentage of contraband is brought in by prison staff, most comes from prisoner relationships. Most of the drugs that come through come through by girlfriends, wives, family members. They can bring it in inside their false teeth. They can bring it in in body cavities. It, there's all kinds of ways they can bring it in. If the dogs don't hit on it at the gate, then it goes through, and, and we have no mechanism to stop that. If it's positive, it'll be the same color or close to the same color as what you see there on that little package. It'll be a red. As soon as she breaks her second ampule. See there? So this is some good stuff. If they not found this, he'd have had a very Merry Christmas and an absolutely Happy New Year. Coming up, 6,000 inmates trapped in Orleans Parish Prison 
after Katrina hits. There were people breaking windows, starting fires. Uh, most of us were afraid that we were going to die there. Warden Kane leads a rescue team while under attack. That's one of the things they threw out of that bridge at us. That's a spear. For every man who ends his life in Angola, there are dozens ready to take his place. Each week, a new shipment arrives. 12.95.7. Most come to spend the rest of their days behind bars. But since Katrina damaged prisons in New Orleans, a whole new group, mostly parole violators and men awaiting sentencing, get to pay a visit. I'm from Kenner, Louisiana. I'm coming from Jefferson Parish. I'm on a parole violation. I was just on the wrong place at the wrong time. It happens. In the days following Katrina, 6,000 inmates were trapped in Orleans Parish Prison. Wilford Martin was one of them. When the levees broke is when we noticed that Whole businesses outside of the very prison were underwater. No sergeants were around, no guards. We don't know where they were at. We were just stuck on the fourth floor. And that's when we all realized we, we're stuck here. And this is like, it seems like it's life or death. Five days after the levees broke, they were finally rescued by Warden Kane and his tactical team. We came in this way the first night to get the first 950 prisoners, but the water was coming up. We barely got through all this was water. And we came right down here to this to this underpass, and right here was a man laying dead. We put the scaffold right here, and it went down from this side. You can see the rope still there. And we would lower, the inmates would climb down that scaffold, and we lined them up in this road, about 6,000. Probably the largest mass movement, obviously, of inmates in the country. We would put the boats in the water right down here under this overpass and run them all the way around here. Meanwhile, the folks on top at first, they threw stuff at us. That's one of the things they threw off that bridge at us. It's still right here. Remember that? That's a spear. Transported by boat and then bus, close to 2,000 parish prisoners ended up at Angola. Some, perhaps simply victims of bad luck. My name is Paul Kunkel from Toledo, Ohio. We were on a long vacation, about 35 days traveling across country all the way down to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, where I have a timeshare. Uh, we came back through Arizona and Texas, uh, where I was looking for property. Uh, we went to New Orleans, to Bourbon Street. I fell down, and my friend picked me up, and we were picked up by the New Orleans police and accused of being drunk in public. I've been here 21 days. Um, first uh, few days, we were in the New Orleans County Jail. We were left without food or water uh, for three days. Near riots broke out. There were people breaking windows, um, starting fires. Uh, most of us were afraid that we were gonna die there. It was so horrible. Um, water was up to our shoulders by the time they got us out of there. They put us uh, in small boats, took us to this uh, bridge area. Um, I saw my friend for about two minutes. Uh, first thing he said to me, he goes, this is a goddamn nightmare. Well, a nightmare for some, for others including the first women inmates to sleep at Angola in 44 years. A blessing. I was so weak, I couldn't even, I couldn't barely walk when they got ready to put me in the boat to come out of there. Was, was, we had about that much water to drink within three days and one sandwich. The warden came and got us and put us all like in a little fishing boat and took us up under the bridge and said, as soon as we got there, they fed us, gave us water. What's the lesson you learned from all this? Oh, I stayed the hell out of jail. Sadly, in the years since Katrina, crime has skyrocketed in New Orleans, and the prisons are fuller than ever. You can't go back to that same crowd you hang with when you come out of five years of prison, because you're going to go back to do the same thing. And that's where I ended up, just going back, hanging out with that crowd, thinking everything was cool, trying to make up for these lost years, when actually I should have just been moving forward with my life and focusing more on me being a father to my little girl. It's a transition. I got my verdict now. I'm on a mission. I hear my mom's praying, wishing that I should have listened, but I wouldn't listen. Ain't got a pot to piss in. Locked in this block, here to rot in another prison. Come on, come on. Yes, yes. When he comes out, be like him. Come on, come on. Maury 
rehabilitation is the only true rehabilitation. We teach them the skills and trades, read, write, and, and all that, but we just made a smarter criminal unless we have a moral component with it. Accused by some of turning the prison into a Christian revival camp, Warden Kane has a simple response. One guy I brought up about the separation of church and state, and I, and I said to him, don't let your inflexibility make you ineffective. We don't care what religion you are. We just need this church because this is an island of freedom, and we get them in here, and then we can start working on them to be more moral, you know, moral person. And then we, our recidivism rates go down. That equals less victims of violent crime, which is what we're after. If we save one, it's worth it all. One is worth it. And so no one, no one in his right mind would object to trying to, to have morality in a prison. This is an idiot. Coming up on Lock Up Angola. Hey, man, Rick, how long you been here? I've been here 24 years. Time at Angola runs out for two men. I will maintain my mental stability. One walks. The other stays forever. There are few ways out of Angola prison. Rarely is one granted parole or probation. The prison is simply too big to escape. Most just get old and die. One month after we first filmed at Camp J, Billy McCoy, age 63, had a heart attack. I have always been on track. I will maintain my mental stability when I did and six feet in the ground. One day later, he died. No one came to claim his body. Though no family could be contacted, Billy McCoy will be buried at Point Lookout in the prison cemetery by volunteers of the Point Lookout Project, who soberly understand that in doing so, friends and volunteers may be doing the same with them one day. Is there anybody else that would like to share something that you, Brother Billy McCoy, at this time, anybody else? Defiant until the end, Billy, better known by his nickname, Understanding, left a strong impression on his fellow inmates. And a lot of people didn't understand understanding because of his unique way of understanding things. <laughs> but I, on, on a more serious note, I think the common denominator that we all have with uh, Mr. Bill McCoy. Mr. B uh, McCoy died in prison, and that's the fate that a lot of us could, you know, have to undergo if situations, circumstances don't change. I think we all want to leave a legacy, but if we have the opportunity to leave a legacy. Start right here today. We can change some of the things we're doing, how we think. You know, I just want to encourage you, brothers. You know, to just stay focused, stay diligent. And, Look toward the future, so when it's all said and done, the people can have something good to say about us when it's all said and done. Amen. I would just like to say that Y'all need to really let this be an example to your own life because his life is here and his life is now gone on to be with the Father. And so let this be testimony to the rest of you in his memory that we conduct ourselves as we should and we conduct ourselves as moral people and then we perpetuate that throughout this whole community and just let not him die in vain. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Bound. No more chains in me. While one man is buried, another man gets a second chance. Ricky, how you doing? Are you happy today? I'm the happiest man in prison today. All right, Ricky. You spent your life now, Rango. I'm thinking of seeing you out. What do you say? Right now? Right now. Right now. Step up in the what do you think about all this? Oh man, it's great, man. I've been waiting for this a long time. Wait for you. Long time, Warren. How'd it feel to be innocent in here? Well, 
you can't think about it, Warren. You know, when, How you do when you know when you know you're innocent, and you should think about it, it'll kind of uh, mess with you a little bit. So you, all you do is just try to work on getting out. Ricky Johnson was cleared of rape based on DNA evidence. He was serving a life sentence. Well, what do you think about the innocence project? Oh, man, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you love them, huh? I love them, boy. I love them. They did, they did you a good thing. I love them, too. I tell you what, I think it's horrible that a fella has to be in prison as innocent. And it makes me shudder to think about it. And I feel a little bad for you being here this long. The transfer is in my office. That's why I come back here to tell you. So, congratulations. You got 24 years here with us that you didn't need to have, but, you know, you're going for it. Congratulations. Thank you. Before stepping into the free world, Ricky says goodbye to his brother, Frederick. He is serving a life sentence for murder. I got him pictures here. I got him pictures here. I told you I was going, brother. Yeah, yeah. I had a dream, man. You went home, man. About two days ago, man. You mean about two days ago, you went home, man. What was the dream like? What was in the dream? Right, you know, you know, I had a dream that he had went home. You know? A dream that he, you know, somebody had told you, man, your brother gone, man. You ain't think I was gonna sneak out here on you, huh? Yeah. You thought I was gonna sneak out here? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah, man, I thought you were gone, man. Man, you thought I wasn't gonna leave him, but I said, you're my little brother. I love you, man. See you go, man. I'm glad to see you go, man. I ain't gone. I ain't. I might be going out of trouble, but I ain't going out your life. I don't think I'm going out your life. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry, man. Don't worry. Take care of yourself, man. Too bad. I'll take care, man. All right, then, man. All right, I'll take care of you, boy. We're gonna interrupt this service for one moment. This DJ <laughs> down the road, spin doctor, kicking it from the station that kicks behind the bricks. The only incarceration station in the nation. <laughs> we got somebody here want to just say hello to everybody, and actually he want to say goodbye. Hey Amen. Rick, how long you been here? I've been here 24 years. I've been here ever since 1984. I've been locked up 27 years. Rick, you've been saying that all the while that you was innocent, huh? Yeah, I said that from the first day. The okay. first day they tried to get me to say I was guilty and give me 10 years, but I couldn't lie. I couldn't say I did something I didn't do. It was a nice day here with y'all, which I didn't really want. Amen. But uh, I got to depart. I'm going on out of here. I got cut loose today. DNA cut me loose. And I just want to say goodbye to inmate population. Everybody down the wall, everybody at Camp L, Camp D, Camp C. Just want y'all to know, keep your head up. Don't lose hope. And uh. One day it'll be you walking out this game. Don't worry about I was on with me anyway. We still just remember one. One. Knife not at the throat, gun in the face. You save one it's worth everything we do. One little girl, one mama's not murdered or raped. Just one daddy is worth everything we do. America's prisons, dangerous, often deadly. There are two million people doing time. Every day is a battle to survive and to maintain order. Down on your feet! Down. This is Lockout, inside Angola. Over 5,000 men living behind the gates of one of America's oldest prisons. Serving sentences so long, most will die here. One out of every two that you, that you see in this prison is a murder. Violence close to the surface, ready to explode. Trouble's not hard to find. If, you, if you're looking for it, if you're not careful, trouble will find you. I think it's the idea. I will maintain my mental stability when I need it in 62 degree ground. The Lord has blessed me with a 
dead or alive. Ninety miles from New Orleans, up the Mississippi River, lies Louisiana State Penitentiary. Commonly referred to as Angola, at 18,000 acres, it is the largest prison in America. Started as a slave plantation in the 1700s, converted to a prison plantation at the end of the Civil War, and taken over by the state in 1901, this storied land has seen more than its share of pain. It was once conspicuous. Inmates in good standing can participate. No skill required. You nervous? You excited? A little nervous. I got 51 years. On drop and aggravated burden. Bad luck. Bad luck. Does it hurt? Just a little bit. The inmates also get rewarded for winning the rodeo events. $200 for convict poker. $80 for winning the bull riding event. Cowboy of the Year, awarded to the highest scoring inmate, gets a championship buckle. These are the worst inmates you could have in any prison in the country, but yet they're rehabilitated to the point that they can come and mingle with the people. It just shows that we can change prisons in America. We can have culture changing within our prisons that we have here. Some criticize the event's brutality. Others say the prisoners don't deserve the excitement of the rodeo. These inmates who participate can be king for a day. And that's something they really never get in prison. And some people would say, well, who cares? Well, I say, well, what one day? Great day for a rodeo. We will get set for the event that is indeed unique to Angola. It's about uh, challenging the bull. So who got the, um, the biggest, you know, kahunas? <laughs> the biggest prize is for guts and glory. The goal? Pull a chit off a bad bull's head. It's a brutal event, and many a man has sacrificed his own blood and bones to take home the $500 prize, worth more than a year's wages. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, saying, God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. And he said, let him have dominion over the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and the beasts of the field, and every creeping thing that roam upon earth. God gave this. Thank God. Coming up, while some at Angola find freedom in the brutality of the rodeo arena, there are those who barely see the light of day. The restriction is too severe for me. For them, there is Camp J. You will be held here until you can get to the program. I have been without food for seven days now. Angola's soil is some of the richest in the United States. Considered the bloodiest prison in America, and its current population of 5,148 men serve sentences so long, it's estimated that 90% of them will die here. Yet things have changed drastically over the past decade, and much credit goes to Warden Burl Kane. Corrections is our name. The root word is to correct deviant behavior, if we can save one person from being a victim of violent crime, it's worth everything we do. And that's really what our mission is. It's not to torment and torture, but it's to correct bad behavior and do that any way you can. And the, the root way to do that is morality. Moral people obviously don't rape, pilfer, and steal. Right here in the midst of Angola, I have seen change and it's because they see the favor of God on your life. Warden Kane's approach to morality works on two levels. 
one spiritual and religious, the other engaging employment opportunities. Church is optional, work is not. Well, I've been editing for really about a month now, and uh, I've been with LSP Productions for about nine months. Perhaps the most unusual example of innovation at Angola is the TV station, the only big house production company in the United States. Before we do a shoot, we have to kind of step back and kind of ask, well, if some outside company was doing it, what would they ask? I mean, choose your behavior, choose your consequence. I chose Angola by the lifestyle that I was living. I'm not going to just lay down and just roll over. I mean, I want my life to mean something, and it can even know that I'm in prison. Every member of the TV station, but one, is serving a life sentence. Well, I really enjoy it. You know, it's a challenge. Of course, I like learning new things, and I hope to make a career out of it if I should ever get out of prison. LSP TV broadcasts on a closed circuit system, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are religious shows, educational programming, and the most popular of all, sports. All right, they're mixing it up early. What we do is a TV station, there's a show called Ringside, and once a month we we'll go to another prison here in, in Louisiana, we'll go from BOC, and the boxing team here will fight the boxing team there. Sports keep people's minds off the tedium of time, and few sports are more popular than boxing. For those who make the team, it's a paid job, albeit the salary range is only four to 20 cents an hour. Well, I mean, you know, doing what you love, whatever, you know, I mean, I'm a boxer, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I love, that's what I'm gonna do to the day I die. And to be able to do what you want is, is a sort of freedom. If boxing spices up Angola's weekly TV right. schedule, Here we are. it is the rodeo that provides the year's greatest highlights. The event takes place on prison grounds every Sunday in October and twice in April. The stadium holds 10,000. All free people coming to see the spectacle. 